Today we're going to look at the effects of heat, or more specifically, the stain rates of fire, have on the performance of a barrel. To do this, I have two barrels that I'm going to shoot for three 30-shot groups in a row, and I'll be looking for the effects on group size, group location, and velocity changes. I'll be using the heaviest and lightest barrels that I have. This will give us two sample sizes, and it will also let us see if any barrel characteristics seem to influence the performance. The lighter barrel is a Faxon 14.5 inch gunner, and the heavier barrel is an 18 inch stainless steel barrel from Nordic Components, which I believe was manufactured by Wilson Arms. Let me know in the comments if that sounds right. So this will give us a few data points to see what we can see. Each barrel will shoot three 30 shot groups in a row, which will take a total time of about 10 to 11 minutes to fire all 90 shots. Both will be using free floated handguards. There will be no muzzle device on the 18 inch barrel to prevent possible interference. The Faxon barrel has a pin and welded brake, so that will be staying on. The groups will be shot off a bench with a front rest and a rear bag. A three inch bag rider will be used to fit the front rest. Short screws are used with the bag rider to prevent contacting the barrel. A mirage shield has been placed on top of the handguard. The scope is a Vortex Viper 6.5 to 20 by 44. Scope ring torque was confirmed at 15 inch pounds. Magnification is set at 20 and parallax is set at 100 yards. The velocity of each shot will be recorded by the chronograph, which is placed 8 yards from the muzzle to avoid muzzle blast triggering the sensors. A Mantis X10 Elite is mounted to the back of the upper receiver. This is an accelerometer that will grade each shot based on how steady the rifle was at the moment of firing, and the groups will be measured by the Ballistic X app. It will take about 10 to 11 minutes to shoot all 90 rounds for the three 30 shot groups. All shots will be fired at 100 yards, which is verified with a laser range finder. The point of aim is a small circle at the bottom of the target. The rifle is zeroed, so the point of impact is higher than the point of aim. I do this to prevent shooting out my aiming point. Wind will be monitored with a ribbon, and both barrels will be shooting 77 grain sear match kings with N140 powder and Lake City brass that I loaded up the day before this range trip. All right, let's go. The shooting footage has been edited so it isn't as boring to watch. Each barrel took about 10 to 11 minutes to shoot all 90 rounds. I shot the Faxon barrel first and the heavier 18 inch barrel second during this range trip. All the shots felt fine on my end, but unfortunately I put the Mantis on the wrong setting and it didn't function like it normally does, so we're missing a bunch of data on that. Anyway, out of the 180 shots here, there are three that fell significantly outside the bulk of the group for the Faxon barrel. We'll talk about those a little bit later. Other than that, the shooting was pretty uneventful on my end. I was able to get a temperature reading on the Faxon barrel at the end of the test, but I wasn't able to get one on the 18 inch barrel since it's shiny and the thermometer doesn't like shiny surfaces. The wind was pretty calm on this range trip like it normally is, so the wind shouldn't affect these groups too much. So with all that, the data set isn't perfectly clean, but we'll see if we can learn anything from this. Here are the combined results. At the bottom, you can see the three 30 shot groups overlaid onto one target, and at the top we have the 90 shot stats for each barrel. The Faxon barrel had a 90 shot group size of 4.765 MOA, with an average velocity of 24.95 and an SD of 20. The Nordic Components barrel had a group size of 3.329 MOA, with an average velocity of 25.77 and an SD of 15. If we break things down into 30 shot groups, we can get a much better look at things. First, we'll look at the groups on the Faxon barrel. If you look at the numbers, the mean radius between the first and second group was very similar, and then increases a bit for the third group. And if you look at the group size, there's a pretty clear increase between groups 1 to 3. However, we need to talk about these three little guys. Shots number 51, shots number 66, and 74. These shots were obviously well inside their respective groups. However, the side pressure looked fine, and the shots felt fine when I broke them. And the Mantis course also looked within their normal range. So I don't really have a good reason to discount these shots. But we're still going to play the what-if game. So if we discount those three shots, the mean radius doesn't change a whole lot, but the group sizes get much closer to one another, ranging from 2.381 MOA to 2.698 MOA. So take this however you want it, but personally, I usually put more weight into the mean radius numbers than into the group size numbers. So either way you look at it, groups one and two are pretty close to each other, and the third group opens up a little bit. And next we're going to take a look at the change in the center of the group, or the drift in zero if you want to look at it that way. And with the Faxon barrel, there was a little bit of a shift between the first group and the second two. There was a shift of about a quarter MOA of elevation and a half MOA of winded shift. And you can see those numbers change just a little bit if you exclude those three shots or not. But the main takeaway is that the center of the second and third group are basically on top of one another, with the center of the first group being in about a quarter MOA lower and half MOA to the left. Moving on to the Nordic Components barrel, we can see that there are no significant outliers like the Faxon barrel, so we're not going to discount any of the shots. And we can see a pretty similar pattern with the mean radius, with groups 1 and 2 being pretty similar, and then opening up on group 3. And the same sort of thing is happening with the group size, with 1 and 2 being very close to one another, and then opening up again on group 3. And looking between the first and the second group with the zero drift, there is less than 2 tenths of a difference in the elevation, and 1 tenth MOA and wind 
percentage difference. And on the third groove, that opened up a bit more with a two tenths change in elevation and a little over eight tenths MOA difference in windage. And out of curiosity, I broke everything down into 10 shot groups to see if there was anything to see. And I don't really see anything interesting here that we didn't really see in the 30 shot group. So you guys can let me know if you see anything in this data. I'd say they, that the only thing that was interesting, I did have a 10 shot sub MOA group with the Nordic barrel. So that was pretty neat. But other than that, I'm not really sure what this tells us. And just because I could, I broke things down again into five shot groups. Uh, again, you guys can let me know if you see anything with this data. But the only thing that I really saw is that it's harder to tell what's going on. Even with the velocity data, the SDDs range from a low of eight to a high of 30, which is between the five shot groups. So that's really the only interesting thing that I saw. Although if we look at the data from the Nordic components barrel, I'll point out that there was a sub half MOA five shot group between such uh, 46 to 50, which was pretty neat. So I guess that's a bit of a flex. But other than that, let me know if you guys see anything with this data that you didn't see with the 30 shot group. Coming back to the 30 shot group data, we'll take a quick look at the velocities. One concern that I've heard about shooting a hot barrel is leaving around cooking in the chamber, which can lead to increased muzzle velocity due to the powder getting hotter. If you look at both barrels, we can see that the fastest velocities were both in shots 61 to 90. And with the Nordic components barrel, there was a total average velocity spread of 14 feet per second. And with the Faxon barrel, there was a spread of seven feet per second. So I was expecting to see a little bit more there, but that's what we got. So this can obviously be affected by the temperature stability of the powder, as well as some other variables. But I suppose that's an interesting side note to this test. All right, so moving on to the conclusions and final thoughts. There seemed to be a pretty minimal difference between the first and second 30 shot groups between both of the barrels, and then a mild increase in group size with the third 30 shot group. And the change in the center of the group was less than one MOA in any direction for all the 30 shot groups. So as this pertains to how I usually shoot AR-15s, which is generally in multi-gun matches and black rifle matches, I don't think that barrel heat's gonna be a significant issue for me, as most of the stages are less than 60 rounds, and most of the targets are generous enough that I don't think these changes are gonna cause any misses. And then as far as my barrel reviews, where I usually shoot 30 shot groups, I don't think that barrel heat is going to have played a significant role in those either. But let me know how this information applies to your use of an AR-15. Also, I was surprised there wasn't a larger difference between the two barrels. They both seem to perform about the same as far as the difference across all 90 shots, with the exception of the three flyers with the Faxon barrel, which I'm not sure are heat related or if they're due to a different cause. So I guess that's still to be determined. And if I were to redo this test at some point in the future, here are a couple things I would change. Uh, for one, I could always shoot better. I'm not a perfect shooter, so this could always improve. And in particular the last 30 rounds of the 18 inch barrel I probably lost focus a little bit but other than that most of the shots felt good but there's still room for improvement also trying a larger sample size of 120 to 150 shots would probably be interesting to see if there's a larger effect and also to be interested in trying some fluted barrels particularly when compared to a non-fluted barrel with the same weight and I could also retest after 10 to 20 minutes to see how fast they return to baseline also something else I was thinking about was using a different bullet possibly one with a thinner jacket to see if that has any effect and also potentially a faster shooting cadence with this test after the first and second magazine I attempted to get some temperature readings so there was about a one minute pause between each magazine change so I could easily cut two minutes off the total shooting time and I could also try to shoot in a hotter ambient temperature to see if that exacerbates things but let me know in the comments below if you think there's anything I should do differently if I redo this test and that'll do it thanks for watching and if you could like comment and subscribe I'd greatly appreciate it and I'll probably start our patreon page at some point so let me know what you think of that and that'll do it I'll see you next time later